I'm back again. I had a heart attack. I'm not even joking. There was an excuse this time, all right? I will show you the discharge papers, but I'm not DDoSing myself, so sorry. If you want to hear more about that, you can stick around to the end of the video. <laughs> Viewer watch time. Anyway, I went back to work to redeem my free cups of tea because that's the only reason I go to work. Free cups of tea. When I was, I was greeted by a new member of staff who puts their milk in first. What? So immediately I went home and did a bit of research because I just, I cannot sit there knowing if that is right or not. I'm, you know, I've never been a connoisseur myself, but I do enjoy a good cuppa. So it's time to finally settle the debates. What is the world's best cup of tea proved with science? With science! <laughs> I'm fully embracing my, my Professor arc for this, by the way. I, professor Coulomb coming in clutch. I started with my bog standard cup of tea, the one I always make. We need a control to compare the rest of these teas to. So, step one, boil the kettle. Pretty simple stuff. Step two, prepare the cup of tea with one tea bag of preference. This is just the one my family has in. I had PG tips at work, but you know what? It's fine. We'll, we'll not pay attention to that. Step three, wait. Step four, once the kettle has boiled, add the water to the cup with the tea bag in it. Step five, wait until the tea has steeped. We'll get into the terminology later. Don't worry for all you, you non-tea heads. Step six, remove the tea bag and then add the milk. Amount also to preference. I'm more of a builder's tea kind of guy, but I I'm not one to, you know, argue that. If you like more milk, you put more milk in. And after all that, you can enjoy a good cupper. Or at least you should be able to if it went for the critics, the heathens. You may or may not be surprised that the entire tea making scene is a massive shit show. It's basically just a long angry Twitter thread. It's terrible. Even this bog standard way of making tea is controversial. How? I don't understand it. To finally settle the debate today, we will be looking into three different ways that affects the outcome of a cup of tea to make it better or worse. We will find out. I haven't tested these yet. I'm just reading off of the script. Firstly, the water. Water is su surprisingly diverse. Surprisingly diverse. You could go to three completely different places in the world, never mind the UK or America. Three places in the world and the water would be chemically different. Who knew? This is shown really well in a, a pizza video of, of all videos by Food Theory. You might have seen it. I'm not a scientist, d despite the coat, I know. Go and watch that if you need to know more about like, how chemically different water is in the different places. That's just in America as well. So it, it, it's kind of interesting. I like, go give it a watch. So originally after watching that, I thought, oh, well, it, you know, it, it might be making different teas. All the chemicals in there might be making different flavors of teas around the world. Wrong. It, it could also be right. But I mean, I've discovered some more important things found specifically in the boiling process. Did you know that plastic kettles make water taste funny? Because I didn't until about yesterday. This is because the chlorine in the water, as you can see here, reacts with the plastic and the rubber seals of your kettle in a process called chlorination, which releases more chlorine into the water. And I don't really want to drink pool water. Why is there chlorine in the water to begin with? To kill pathogens, you moron. All the water companies put chlorine in to make it safer for us to drink. Don't worry, the amount of chlorine in the water isn't going to kill you. You're not just drinking out of a leisure center. It's fine, but it does taste a bit strange. So maybe avoid using a plastic kettle if you can. Next, you might have noticed inside of your kettle that these little white specks form around the bottom and around the sides. Give it a funky ass taste. Funky, funky ass water. This is in fact insoluble calcium carbonate and also magnesium carbonate also known to the commoners like myself as lime scale the thing you find in like fucking pipes and shit it's disgusting it's also been seen in studies that the presence of lime scale in your water makes it harder for the tea compounds and the flavors to infuse into the rest of the cup of tea this then reacts with the water inside the kettle giving it a funky ass taste you don't want that in your cup of tea so here's the solution firstly minimize the hard water going into your kettle. That's basically just water with a load of added minerals and shit. The most common solution to this problem is using a water filter to remove said minerals and shit. This in turn will then reduce the amount of lime scale buildup in the kettle, making it so that you don't have to clean it out every five seconds, which I didn't know. I also never have never cleaned the kettle. So this is what you need to do as well. You can clean it with like vinegar and bicarbonate. It's standard shit. You just whack it in the kettle, give it a brush. It'll be fine just to remove the, the hard layer of buildup. It will take some time to get up any hard layers that have been left on there for a while though. Cleaning out my kettle 
bottle is going to be a pain in the ass because it's never been cleaned. Obviously, if you don't have a water filter and you don't want to buy one because it's too expensive, uh, and it is, it is too expensive, you can buy this thing called a kettle protector, which is basically just a wire ball that you whack in the kettle and then it attracts the deposits away from the bottom and the sides of the kettle and then you can clean that out regularly and just get rid of the added lime scale. Problem solved, sorted. But wait, there's more. Facts. Oxygen dissolves in water. Or so this study says that I looked up. When you boil the water, you obviously see bubbles coming up. That is trapped gas inside of the water getting released. Oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, a lot of other shit, all right? Just trapped gases. The release of these gases or too much of the gas in the water also does have an effect on the flavor of the tea. Funnily enough, I already knew this. When I boil the kettle, I boil it straight from the tap into the kettle. Bang, on kettle boil, Whew, gone. As soon as that water is used up and there's any left, I throw it away. It's not ideal. Greta, Greta's looking down on me with disappointment. However, what some people do is they keep boiling the same water, releasing more and more of this gas. This is going to leave a bad taste in the water. Obviously, it's better for the environment. You know, if you keep, if you keep want to do that, that's fine by me. But I'm just letting you know that this will affect the flavor of the tea. Now we know the steps for the kettle. Use a metal kettle or just not plastic. Use a fucking wire ball or filter the water to reduce the hard water in the kettle and only boil the water once. That is it for the kettle we're gonna have to move on to more specifics now but first we need to learn about what tea actually is and what happens chemically when you make it tea leaves or camellia sinensis i think that's how you say that i'm not too sure found natively in east asia and cultivated for drinking as early as the third century ad and then the brits came along when these leaves are exposed to boiling water they release chemical compounds known as polyphenols a category of plant compound known to increase the vitamin c content and reduce stress according to phd jack redacted my good friend who definitely isn't a doctor he he's just my friend and he studies stem so I trust him. Tea is most commonly consumed in the form, as you may know, of a tea bag right here. This is basically a paper bag filled with dehydrated tea leaves. Yes, dehydrated little crumbs kind of looks like nits. But there you are. When the water is then re-added and it rehydrates the tea leaves, it starts the steeping process, which is basically just a way for the flavor compounds to move into the rest of the water known through osmosis, which if you've done GCSE, GCSE biology, you probably know a lot about it. By my knowledge, the tea bag acts as a semi-permeable membrane and the highly concentrated polyphenols and all the flavors of the tea from the inside of the uh, of the tea the tea bag thing, the, the, the filter. It's not filter paper, I'm gonna call it filter paper. The highly concentrated polyphenols and the flavors of the tea from the inside of the tea bag with the very, very tensely brewed tea from the inside then transfers through the filter paper to the other side of the water, which is less concentrated through osmosis, which then tries to reach equilibrium in between the two states. The longer you leave this to happen, obviously, the more concentrated the tea is going to become. Now, if you leave it for too long, it will become oversteeped. But what does that even mean? And also, when does that happen? There's no set time. It's more down to preference, so we've had to look a little bit deeper. If you steep tea for too long, then it becomes astringent or bitter, as one of the compounds released when steeping is called tannins, which give tea this, this weird bitter taste. The longer the steep, the more tannins, the more bitter the cup of tea overall. Now, humanity being the tea connoisseurs that we are, we have tried to perfect the perfect amount of time for a not bitter, but also very flavorful cup of tea. Now, this depends on if you're adding milk at all to the tea. Obviously, if having green tea or something like that, it's going to be different. But for the purposes of our tea, black tea, it's going to have milk in. But just in case it's not, if for some reason you want black tea with no milk, I'm, I'm not going to judge you, I'm going to judge you, but just in case you want to do it, the perfect steeping time for that is around 45 seconds. This means you'll get as much flavour from the tea before the tannins start to make it bitter, since you've not got milk to offset the bitterness. However, when milk is added to the equation, because you're a normal human being, around two to three minutes is the estimated time for the best cup of tea to offset the bitterness as well with the milk, it's fine. Two to three minutes is not quite precise enough for me though, so I have done some added research. ISO 3103, 
also known as the International Standard Cup of Tea. This is the cup of tea they use internationally to test all the different teas against each other to find the best parts about each tea. All it is is basically a very strict set of instructions that everyone has to follow to make sure you minimize the amount of error in testing different teas. Therefore, you can really isolate the different flavor differences. They recommend you brew for a whole six minutes. That is ridiculously long, too long. Well, I, I should be fucking coming back to editing when I'm making a cup of tea. Six minutes, I'm wasting my day. I am wasting away. But for the sake of just knowing the correct cup of tea, I tried it, and guess what? It tastes like shit. It's way too long, it's way too bitter, I don't recommend it. This is literally just for them to test the flavour differences. It's not the ideal tasting cup of tea, it's just a standard that they can test against. So, stick to two, three minutes. Bang! Brewing time. Another key component absolutely mastered. Obviously, two to three minutes is still a large range. So what I'm going to do at the end of the video is make three separate cup of teas. One brewing at two minutes, one at 2.30 and one at three. And we'll test those at the end just to try and find out what the ideal cup of tea is for me because now I'm, I'm kind of interested. But if you're trying this for yourself, maybe just go from two to three minutes and experiment between those lines until you find the ideal cup of tea for you. Finally, I wanted to check one more thing, that being the temperature. The temperature of two things to be exact and how that affects the final product. Firstly, the temperature of the water as you add it to the tea bag, but also secondly and arguably definitely more important, how temperature affects whether you should put the milk in first or the milk in last. All right, we're fine. We're settling it with science. You cannot argue with this. Trust me, I had done my research on this part. It took a long time. Firstly, the temperature of the water. I knew how this affected coffee. So what you normally do is if you put hot water, freshly boiled water into coffee straight away, it can tend to burn it, which then gives the coffee a weird acidic taste as it releases the inner acids, mostly quinic acid, if I recall correctly. Funnily enough, when you burn coffee actually what happens is it gets the drink from around you know it's seven you know neutral range on the pH scale to around a 4.81 to so like a 5.16 which is is quite acidic so for tea originally I was unsure if it would work the same however it is quite similar much like the coffee releases its quinic acid when it gets burnt when you burn the tea it releases a lot more of the tannins that we've already spoke about making the tea bitter so normally what people recommend is you wait for the kettle to get to a, a little simmer you see the little bubbles on the top wait till it gets to a simmer and then add that water in after it's boiled you see what i mean so you're not the temperature's decreased a lot anyway now it's time to settle the great debate all right milk first or milk last when you put the milk in first to the tea bag before the water technically what you're doing is reducing the temperature of the cup of tea this is very important you need to remember this heat is a massive catalyst for the infusion of tea which you don't know what a catalyst is it's basically something that speeds up the reaction since the overall drink is cool what's going to happen is it's going to take way longer for the infusion of the flavors to happen This wouldn't be an issue obviously because you could just brew it for longer just brew it for longer However, brewing it for longer then releases even more tannins making a more bitter cup of tea So you shouldn't be putting the milk in first to the tea bag But the argument doesn't stop there because fucking milk first people just really really want to find a, a correct answer for them All right, they don't like the facts. They just want their way to be better I always get referred to this one article by milk first people by who's this guy? Dr. Andrew Stapley. He's a lecturer at the University of Lobra. I don't know where that is, but he's a professor. You know, he's a lecturer, so he knows what he's talking about. He states in this, and I quote, add the tea to the milk rather than the other way around. This is literally their only argument. I've spoke to so many people who put milk in first, and this is their only argument when they do the research about it, which proves one thing and one thing only. People who put the milk in their tea first can't read. He states, add the tea to the milk, not the water to the milk and the tea. That, that's not what he said. Read, read what you're fucking preaching to me. He's already brewed the tea. He brewed the tea separately with the water first, you morons. Unfortunately, Dr. Andrew Stapley did not put the reasoning for this in his whole paper, or at least I can't find one. So I kind of put together some of my own knowledge to try and explain why he has freshly brewed tea, pouring it into the milk. What he did state, however, in his paper is that if you add the milk to the tea, it will heat unevenly, which then makes the proteins denature, and then it will lose the flavor of the milk, which you don't want. You want the creamy flavor of the milk in your tea. What it also does is it 
it makes it more likely for the tea to form like a light film on the top of it, which is completely you know, unflavored, completely harmless. People just don't like it for textural reasons on the top of their tea. It's understandable. However, if you really do dislike the film on the top of the tea, the best thing to do is to use filtered water because, you know, the milk going in last isn't the most like number one factor for it. It's actually how hard the water is that you put in the kettle. Make this weird saying that hard water. So by my knowledge, adding tea to the milk works because of this reason. I, you know, I'm going to explain this in layman's terms. So don't try and like correct me in the comments with your um, actually don't don't do that. I don't care. When you start adding the tea, there is less hot liquid than there is the cold liquid being the milk. So as you keep adding the temperature of the new like milky solution will gradually increase to meet the temperature of the hot tea, you know, making it more a sort of smooth process minimizes the denaturing of the milk proteins. It's kind of like how you add like you know when you like a custard you add hot milk to the eggs slowly though to bring the temperature up just so it doesn't scramble that, 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 that's kind of how my mind's worked around it obviously it could not be that i'm pretty sure it's that could not be that though so you know take it with a grain of salt but anyways that is the best way to make a cup of tea the definitive set of instructions made by coulomb to make the best cup of tea the only thing to do now is to try out the three cups of tea to decide which is the best for me. I am excited. I want to drink some tea right now. Also, like this many people are subscribed. What the freak? I'm not getting the statistic up. To be honest, I don't give a shit. Honestly, there's not need to say much. This one is just clearly better. That's two, two and a half, three. This is just better. There is, a, I, I can't switch the camera around. Hang on. You can probably tell by the fact that I've almost, I've watched when they finished up. Test confirmed, two half minute. Anyway, I had a heart attack. Yeah, I said, I said you'd learn more if you stuck around to the end of the video. So I guess I'll give you a rundown. I wasn't lying. I genuinely did have a heart attack. There's no excuse. To be fair, I, sh I should have come back a lot earlier, but Christmas happened and then blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I I'm not very consistent, all right? The doctors couldn't find that anything was wrong. They literally, I've, I've been going in there. Literally since it happened, I went in, I was sat in a hospital bed just chilling. I was fine. I was fine after it happened and they've not been able to find anything ever since. The only reason they knew I had a heart attack was because of my troponin levels in my blood, which was kind of crazy they were like at 500 and summer it's kind of mad but anyway that's why i, I stopped uploading anyway I, I may as well give it like a little update at the end of the video very very short i'm gonna like try and pivot my content ever so slightly you might notice that like i've never done this this style of video before this is more of like a sciencey kind of video but i kind of like it i, I kind of had the idea i want to inform more people with what i do it, it's more fulfilling you know if i can teach people something with my video it'll be more fulfilling uh, and I, I love i always loved science i love science i just stopped doing it at a level when i when I dropped out full time to go and fry chicken. So, you know, speaking of frying chicken, look at the drip. Holy, hang on a second. Let me refocus the camera. Look at the drip. I stole them from work. They look sick. There's two more here as well. You can't really see them. But now every time I wake up, I'm reminded of food. But anyway, yeah, that's it. So um, thanks for sticking around. I'm sorry if this new style of content doesn't interest you. This is basically what I'm going to be doing more of. I kind of like it. So if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I guess you can unsubscribe if you're not cool. Whatever. I don't care. But thanks for sticking around, chaps. I'm going to I'm gonna go fry some chicken in about, uh, in about 15 minutes, actually. So uh, I'll see you later.